The Tampa Bay EDC is for Hillsborough County. However, I'll get into a little bit at the end how we partner with the um, Pinellas County EDC and Pasco EDC. I know Brent's on the call, so Brent, you might be able to chime in at the end if you'd like. But uh, we I'm also. Curious, they're fine. <laughs> but. Uh, Uh-oh. Who did we lose? Sounds like Madison's frozen. Madison, you're frozen. You can see that on my tree. Oh. Did we lose her? I think we did. We'll give her a second to, to rejoin. I wonder if I have to. She did tell me her internet was kind of iffy. Let's see if we. Hey, Doug, let's give her just one more minute. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I was looking to see if I needed, if she was can, coming out and coming back in, but I don't see her. Oh, here she comes, here she comes, here she comes. And we think we have Madison back. I see her name. Do we have you? Can you hear me? Yep, welcome back. Sorry, my internet has been a little wishy-washy lately, so I've moved to my phone, so that will not happen again. Hope oh, you're good. Um, but yeah, so where was I talking about? Sorry for that. Okay. Exports, oh, just going quickly, very briefly. Marketing, so we do have a marketing team and they'll promote digital campaigns, kind of promoting the region for business, as well as a research team. Um, so when we are recruiting those companies, oftentimes they'll want to uh, compare our market versus, say, Nashville or Charlotte, um, mm -hmm. other competitors, so we can provide those. Uh oh. I think we lost her again. Okay. Well, virtual works great until it doesn't, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Madison. Yeah. You were on research. Did you leave? Did you lose me? Yeah. yeah. All right, Dave, if that happens again, you can take over. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Will do. <laughs> um, research. We do have a research team, so when we are trying to recruit companies when they oftentimes ask for market comparison. So comparing us to Charlotte or us to Nashville, what does our workforce look like? What does our local economy look like in comparison to those other markets? And then we have an investor relations team and that is because the EDC is a public private nonprofit, meaning about 75% of our funding comes from private investors um, and 25% comes from the city and the county. How we help businesses. So this is just, a short list, I won't go through it, but things that I mentioned, uh, such as helping site selection, so companies finding uh, a new market, how do we promote ourselves, customer research, business intelligence, um, expedited permitting, um, and that's often something that we can as assist with companies that are coming here for the first time and local companies who need to grow and expand. Um, workforce training, when Dave speaks a little bit, he works with Career Source Tampa Bay, which I'm sure some of you have heard of, which is our workforce board that provides assistance to companies who are either hiring new employees or training current employees. Uh, next slide. Industry sectors. Here, I have it here because it's so tiny my phone. Um, so the companies that we do serve are going to be non-market serving companies, meaning not a local restaurant, unfortunately, but companies that don't need to be here. They're in Tampa because of the workforce, because of the culture, the community culture and our local economy. So the industry sectors that we focus on now are defense and security, because McDill Air Force Base has made that a large industry here. Manufacturing, advanced manufacturing, life sciences and healthcare logistics and distribution, which is in a large part because of our Port Tampa Bay. 
Um, information technology, as some of you know, IT has been booming, especially in the cybersecurity and fintech sector here in Tampa, as well as trying to recruit corporate headquarters has been a big focus of ours and trying to bring in some companies from outside of Tampa that want to relocate, relocate their headquarters here so we have those high wage jobs. So with that, I'll turn it over to Dave. Um, and Dave's gonna speak a little bit about Hillsborough County's financial assistance program that we got as part of the CARES Act. Hey, um, David, before you start, can we see if anybody has any questions about Madison? Cause I know I have a couple that I can either ask here or I can ask outside of, of here, but it would be interesting to see, I'm working on this with Pinellas County to see if there's some statistical data um, kind of a Reader's Digest version that we might be able to get to uh, to share with our business community. Uh, Madison, you talked about comparing the Tampa Bay area to other communities, and it's kind of nice to see how we benchmark against other things. Uh, I'm getting ready to do that for, um, you know, uh, the average age, the average wage, uh, and how we compare uh, in Oldsmar to, uh, I'm getting ready to do it for Pinellas County, but I assume that information is probably available in print form or we can generate it, I guess. Yeah, so we, we have quite a bit of research on our website, the CDC website under research, but if there's something specific like that, I can make sure we get it to you. Oftentimes we've already had the research done and we've used it in some sort of proposal when a company is talking to us. So anything specific, feel free to let us know. Otherwise okay. our website has, has a ton of information, yep. both regionally for Hillsborough County specifically. Awesome, great, yeah. And we'll make sure that we let people know about the, get, how to get a hold of that information. So thank you. Yeah. Any, any other questions from the crowd? You unmute yourself and, and go ahead and ask them about the exporting, otherwise we'll get on to David. Anybody? Good to go. All right, David. So I'm gonna uh, discuss today one of, one of the things that is keeping me the most busy, and that is business, business retention and expansion. Um, Hillsborough County received several million dollars in CARES Act funding, um, and they've established this Rapid Response Recovery Program, or the R3 program, to assist individuals who, whose jobs were impacted by the pandemic and businesses who were also impacted by the pandem pandemic. The idea of the R3 program is to put in front of businesses and individuals who are impacted resources and places to get money to fix things that, you know, that, that impacted your business as a result of COVID. So I'm going to be discussing the uh, Hillsborough County program. Again, uh, this is for Hillsborough County located businesses and job seekers who reside in Hillsborough County. Um, there are three financial assistance programs available now. They've been around for um, about a month and a half, but there's quite a bit of money still out there. There's about 15 or $16 million in, in these, you know, in, in these grant programs to assist small businesses, the kickstart program, back to work programs, trying to match those people that lost their jobs to COVID to businesses who are hiring. And then businesses that have had to change, uh, like a manufacturer who's had to change the, their production floor for COVID-19 safety. There's programs out there to assist those businesses as well. Um, general el eligibility, well, and, and honestly, the, the eligibility requirements have been lightened up. Um, we're even uh, considering assistance for startups and for businesses that are opening within Hillsborough County um, to give them an opportunity to uh, be eligible and qualify for these uh, grant programs. But again, the business has to be located within Hillsborough County. Um, there are programs for, it's basically we're targeting for-profit business, but there's also some opportunity now for nonprofit. Um, again, eligibility is, you know, registered uh, in good standing in Hillsborough County, no disqualifying criminal, uh, no gambling, CBD, you know, or medical marijuana use. Um, Kickstart is designed uh, 
for small business. You know, like the slide says, the qualifying business must have three million or less in revenue. Um, but for a small business like that, even, you know, like a coffee shop or a, a mom and pop little restaurant, the ability to uh, get some assistance for their business to keep people on the payroll is, is very important. And we hope that uh, if you're aware of businesses that are small who are needing uh, at this time some additional kickstart funding um, to make them aware of this program. Uh, back to work is a, again, it's a designed to identify those individuals who lost their jobs due to the pandemic to businesses that are hiring. We're seeing uh, some good examples of that. I'm seeing several manufacturers who are uh, creating PPE and some other uh, services have been able to uh, take advantage of this program to get training for these new hires to train them on their uh, equipment and to train them on uh, their processes to uh, and actually give these individuals who are generally in hospitality an opportunity to review a different career path. Um, important specifics. Uh, we're looking for businesses to hire like a W-2, you know, a real employee um, we're, the county is not considering uh, 1099 or contractors. Um, and then there's incentives available to businesses as well who retain people um, at, at the end of the uh, at the end of the program. Uh, these dollars expire at the end of the year. So if you're interested, if your business is interested in participating in this, I would recommend that you get out to the county in the R3 program look at the application process, look at the, uh, at the programs that uh, might work for your business and start an application. Uh, safe at work matching, again, you know, I've, for example, I've had a couple of manufacturers who had to uh, make changes to their production floor. Um, they're able to, um, you know, get a little assistance in, in the expense that the business is having to incur as a result of COVID-19 safety practices. And um, as you can see, it's a one-to-one -one match up to $10,000. So if, you, if the business has spent 20 on PPE, the, you know, the wardy can get up to $10,000. And again, it's a nice way to assist the business with um, you know, having to make the adjustments as a result of the COVID pan pandemic. Um, Again, in the application process. So even if your expenses were incurred earlier in the year, please go ahead and apply. Um, you know, the, uh, the county will assist you in making sure that you're compliant and able to uh, receive re reimbursement. So most of the application process has been around. It started on June 30th, but now we're into the full, you know, full access uh, program. So for businesses that have not applied yet, there's really good opportunity for you to go ahead and see if there's if any of these programs or grant do dollars will work for your business. As you can see, here's the, some of the early access distressed areas, but that's no longer uh, important because the early access timing has changed and full access is generally uh, is, you know, is available now. Another neat program, and this again is through the CARES Act, through Career Source Tampa Bay, is um, a training grant program which will pay or reimburse 100% of the first $12,000 of an employee's salary up to, up to 90 days. Um, we think that this is a great way to uh, retain businesses in, in Hillsborough County giving those businesses that are looking to hire um, an incentive to, you know, to hire people that were, that lost their job. Um, again, you know, the requirements, eligible positions must be Florida minimum wage, uh, no 1099, no contractors, um, and business will need to demonstrate that they've suffered economic impact due to COVID-19. But again, I would highly recommend that you review the program 
the, the uh, qualification criteria is not that stringent. We're trying to encourage employers to hire um, with the, our unemployment rate up around 10 or 11 percent. It would be great to get businesses aware of this program and if they have an inclination to hire or retrain and train people, uh, it's a good, uh, good offering. And here's some of the, um, you know, the phased application periods right now we're in full access. So um, almost every business and every area in Hillsborough County, if they can demonstrate the impact of, of COVID-19 on their business, uh, they, it's, you know, they will have the ability to participate. Um, again, you know, under the, uh, here's some additional cri criteria for businesses for kickstart back to work and safe at work programs. Um, there's still plenty of money out there. I would uh, encourage business owners to review these programs. Here's the information on where you, you can find uh, more information about you know, the programs and, and an overview. There's also a support line for businesses and individuals who can, you know, who lost their job or uh, businesses who would like to participate in these programs. Any questions about R3? Anybody in the room? Unmute yourself if you would like. And David, I don't know if um, if you have had any luck. I know we've uh, done this again with Pinellas County and we've talked to uh, Congressman Bill Arrakis uh, about the expiration date. And I don't know if you guys have had any luck with the legislatures uh, about urging them to extend the deadline of the program because it's, you know, I, obviously the, the pandemic has gone on longer than probably we had hoped or anticipated. Um, and, you know, the, the end of the year, whether we like it or not, is fast approaching us. And so we have been urging uh, Congressman Bill Arrakis to see what they can do about getting these federal funds uh, deadlines extended, you know, maybe three months. I don't know if you had any luck on your end with that. Um, you know, I know that Craig, um, Craig Richard, our CEO, has uh, been in touch with the policymakers. There's several issues out there with regard to not only, you know, CARES Act funding and, and more assistance for business, but also, you know, attracting businesses in Florida and being creative in how we do things. But I'll be honest with you, Doug, there's really hasn't been what I've seen as a, a real uh, concrete plan yeah. for extending. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, you know, but I mean, it's a, it's a pretty big task to get people to apply and, and receive and spend the money, you know, uh, by the end of the year now. So hopefully they yeah. so. Almost, we're doing business visits and, you know, and they're generally virtual, but I'm encouraging every one of these, you know, businesses that I touch to, to review, review these programs and see if they can participate. Yep, absolutely. Um, uh, they, and one question that I have is, um, I'm, I'm, I think I'm recording this, but I'm also, if I, if I could get a copy of it, I'll go ahead and push it out through our chamber site and to, uh, to those that, uh, that responded to this, hopefully, and get it to them. Um, and will this, will this website that you have on the shared screen, will that get them to everything that they need to? Yes. Okay, we'll push that out as well. Any questions on on the call? Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Uh, David, I do have a question. Hi, Patty Taylor, I'm with your chamber. Um, I was talking to somebody the other day, and they we were discussing, um, I guess, a grant or something that goes to the small businesses. A portion of that will go to um, legal assistance, um, marketing. And is that true? And if so, how can the marketers in the chamber uh, get a list or um, speak with you about um, helping the small businesses with their marketing? Um, I think what the discussion would need to be is what changes did the, the 
business have to make as a result of COVID-19 to, you know, they probably had to redo their marketing programs or how they just distribute information. Um, it doesn't hurt to ask uh, if, if that would qualify for COVID-19 relief. And I'm happy to assist in that matter. Okay, I will have the person I was talking to get in touch with you. Um, Doug, you have David's information, correct? No, I don't have any information. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. I'll, I'll get it out to everybody. <laughs> She was saying that in Pinellas, a portion of the money, like say you had um, oh, 10,000, like a couple thousand would go to legal assistance, a couple thousand would go to marketing to get your business back up and running. Is that what Hillsborough is doing also? Yes, I mean, and it's being done on a case by case basis. Okay, okay. How quick, David, uh, how quick would you say is the review time? I know uh, Pinellas County just launched, I guess, your, your version also of phase two. And I know somebody, I think we started it Monday before last. And I know somebody's already received some fun. What's the, that was part of the problem in the initial rollout was just the response time. And, and, uh, and I know they've worked it out and I'm sure you have as well. What's typically the response time or is it at, Oh, uh, talking about probably more. Well, no, she was in a, She was a business, so she was a, a work from home business. So I don't know what you're seeing in turnaround. Oh, they're doing. You know what? We're doing much better. Um, the county has worked out. You know, several wrinkles um, from the time of the application process. The the uh, response time is pretty pretty good. Sure. Yeah, I think that was part of the issue with the with the Pinellas County version was everything behind the submit button, <laughs> you know, one thing you hit, once you hit submit, it's what happens on the other end of that submit button that they needed to, you know, make sure that, that, you know, everything had a place and somebody looking at it. And um, I think they had a lot of questions. I know that uh, nonprofits and, and uh, work from home businesses were not covered in the, or work from home businesses were not covered in the first launch and they are now. So, uh, Yours is not nonprofits, correct or no? There is a small portion of it. I think I heard you say. Yep. Okay. Yes, not, nonprofits can apply. Okay. Any other questions from anybody? And if I could get a copy of the, the slide thing, I'll go ahead and make make that available as well. Yeah, Doug, I'll get the slide presentation to you right after the meeting. Yep. No problem. Anything else that that we can share? Uh, yeah, hey, um, we're going to turn it back over to Madison to talk about foreign trade. Yep. We love foreign trade. We do. Oh, God, it's great. All righty. So I will start off with some of the virtual programs that have been shifted because of coronavirus. But our last slide, I'll kind of talk about what we traditionally do and how our international trade partnership works. So first slide here, we have virtual matchmaking programs. So what this means is if you're a company, you have a good that's manufactured in Florida or a service such as IT, marketing, PR, advertising, you can actually qualify for a program with either the U.S. Commercial Service or Enterprise Florida. So what they'll do is you'll apply, you'll kind of tell them what you're looking for. So are you looking for a distributor in another market? Are you looking for a partner to help spread your service in another market? Um, and they'll vet companies in the market that you're looking for and they'll introduce them to you. The way it works with the US Commercial Service is You'll apply, tell them what you're looking for. They work through representatives at the U.S. Embassy and the market that you're looking to do business with. And they have tons of contacts, whether it's with the local government, if you're looking for a government contract or private sector, they'll get you those contacts and they'll make those introductions for you. After that, um, it's up to you to figure out what you want to do with those partners in that market. The way it works with Enterprise Florida is they have what's called an export concierge service. So they have their own Florida representatives in markets around the world. They have a very similar service Well, they'll set you up with um, a potential distributor or partner, whatever it is that you're looking for. Um, however, their service is in select markets that we have Florida representatives. So far, I believe that's in Europe. So if you're looking to do business in Europe, South Africa, Kenya, Tanzania, Japan, Taiwan, Canada, and Mexico. 
if you're looking for Central or South America, we probably say get in contact with the U.S. Commercial Service. And we do have a local office here in Clearwater, the Tampa Bay Export Assistance Center. And I do want to mention this is not just for Hillsborough County companies. This is actually for any Florida company. Um, both of those programs, whether it's with Enterprise Florida or the U.S. Commercial Service, are currently have fees waived, which is an excellent program because of this COVID problem, the U.S. Commercial Service has waived fees for this virtual matchmaking program. If you sign up before the end of this month, actually, that does not mean you have to do the service before the end of the month. You just have to get an agreement in place with the market that you want to do business with, and then you can schedule those meetings throughout 2021. Enterprise Florida has a grant for Florida businesses, and at the moment, um, if you are a company that has uh, either you're manufacturing products in Florida or you are doing your service in Florida, you'll, you'll qualify for that grant. If you are a company that is here in Tampa Bay, but you say you are manufacturing your product from a third party in California or you have your main office somewhere else, but it's in the United States, you'll qualify for the U.S. Commercial Service Program. I'm going to go to the next slide, Dave. So the next slide is just market intelligence. So this might be more for a company who has not exported yet. They don't know where they want to export, what might the best market look like for their product. The commercial service actually offers market intelligence programs. This varies from initial market checks, um, due diligence on foreign parties, market, initial market research per se. So they can partner with the U.S. Embassy um, in a market that you're interested in and just do research and say either, yes, this might be a good market for you or no, maybe you look elsewhere. The Florida Small Business Development Center, our uh, location at USF does what's called an export marketing plan, which is a super in-depth um, research program for you and your business. So what they'll do is they'll research everything there is to know about your product abroad. So they'll give you data which shows what countries is your product being exported to, what is the top country, um, are there trade shows in that country you might want to attend. It's this really large document. It takes a couple of months for them to do all the research, but it's really, really useful for companies who have no idea where to start, who don't know which markets they really want to look for, and this kind of provides actual data to back up where you might want to be looking at when you first start exporting. For the Small Business Development Center, the export marketing plan I think it's around 4,500 or a couple thousand dollars and there is a grant available for Florida businesses. How, and that will leave you with just a couple hundred dollars that you'd have to pay out of pocket. And that couple hundred dollars is also waived through the end of this year actually. So if you are a business, even if you weren't thinking about international, but because this fee is waived, it's a free program for you to get all that research if you want to maybe start exporting within the next couple of years. You have, you'll have that data that you can go to when you are ready to start exporting. Uh, next slide. So gold key services. This is an in-person service. So like I said, that virtual matchmaking program traditionally is done in person where you'll well work with the US commercial service. You'll travel to a country, someone from the commercial service uh, from the local embassy will go with you to your meetings or they'll hire you a translator and they will make sure you understand what the client wants um, the client understands what you're trying to do and that will be anywhere from four to six meetings depending upon what you are looking to do traditionally that service is 950 dollars, and then the price goes up if you want more meetings Right now, the fee for that is also waived because let's say you do want to go in person, you don't want to do the virtual, you plan on maybe traveling to this country closer to next summer when we're hoping that international travel opens up, you can still sign an agreement for that before the end of this month by September 30th. And that fee, that $950 fee is waived. So all that service, all the research they do, the introductions they're going to make for you will be free to you as a U.S. business. Um, Dave, you can go to the next slide and I'll talk a little bit about Global Tampa Bay. So when we are doing international trade, promoting ourselves as a region, as well as promoting international exports from our region, we actually partner as a program called Global Tampa Bay. So it is a tri-county partnership between 
the uh, Economic Development Organizations for Hillsborough County, Pinellas County, as well as Pasco County. Traditionally, what my main role is, is actually coordinating these trade missions in person, where companies will do that in-person gold key service. We'll bring 10 to 20 Tampa Bay companies to another market. Traditionally, it's been in Latin America because that's where we find a lot of Tampa Bay companies want to do business with or are presently doing business with. Um, and we'll all travel together once or twice a year. We'll have receptions, networking events for you and your business to meet clients in that market. You'll go out, you'll have your individual meetings with potential partners or distributors. There's a grant that is um, provided by Enterprise Florida as long as you are manufacturing within the state or doing your service within the state and you are a small business. Um, <clears throat> for example, we were supposed to go to Costa Rica this year in June. Obviously that was postponed. Um, but last year uh, in 2019, we actually traveled to Panama and Sao Paulo, Brazil. We had quite a bit of interest in both of those markets because of our direct service to the Panama Canal from Port Tampa Bay. And Brazil is one of Florida Thor's training partners. So we'll go to places like this. So if you have a business and you're looking to export and let's say you're not sure exactly where you want to go, but we'll put out a bunch of marketing materials when we are ready to take these trade missions. So either you can get in touch with me or if you're in Pinellas, you can get in touch with Brent. Um, I'll, well, Dave and I, the next slide is our contact information. And if there is a trade mission coming up that you're interested in, please let us know. We're happy to give you more details about what that itinerary looks like, what the costs will look like, because there might be a grant um, that you're eligible for for the gold key service, but you do have to pay travel and lodging for these. However, the fee that we'll charge you includes all your meals. So really all you do end up paying for is the travel and lodging. So it's a great way to go to a market, especially if you're unfamiliar with it, travel with a bunch of people, a big group of Tampa, the big delegation. There'll be a reception with the U.S. Embassy, which is a great opportunity to invite um, potential distributors or partners. And oftentimes when we do that, the person you want to invite will want to come because it's pretty exciting if they get to go uh, maybe meet the U.S. Ambassador or Consul General at the U.S. Ambassador's residence. So it is a really good opportunity to kind of promote international trade between Tampa Bay and whatever the region is that we are going to. I don't unfortunately have where we're going to next year since things are so up in the air. I'm hoping we'll look at a virtual option for this if um, kind of COVID and the international travel ban goes on for a much longer period of time. But if you want to stay in touch with us or you want to follow Global Tampa Bay and where we're going and what events are going on, you can follow us on LinkedIn. It's just Global Tampa Bay at LinkedIn. And I've also put the website, um, it's on the previous page, but when Doug shares his presentation with you, it's just www.globaltampabay.com. But any questions on international trade, Global Tampa Bay virtual export assistance, I'm happy to answer. Any questions? I think there's some, those are some great programs and I think you hit on a key point, even though you might not be ready to do it, to get some of the assistance that's available through some of these programs to find out, you know, what markets, especially if you're just in the infancy stage of your uh, manufacturing or exporting, it might be uh, great to find out some of this market analysis as to what's available. And I, I mean, I think that's great. The only other question would be, how might somebody know, um, I know we don't know where or when, but how might somebody kind of get on the radar uh, to find out about uh, some uh, upcoming trip that you may be doing uh, down the road? So I would say follow Global Tampa Bay on LinkedIn. And if you email me, I can add you to my um, email campaign list because when we do start marketing for an event, I'll send out a really large email blast. So basically you just want to get on our email list so you know firsthand yep. when the next event will be. Perfect. And uh, this is, I guess, maybe a dumb question, but I'll go ahead and ask it anyway. I mean, when you talk about exporting, is it actual product or could it be actual, could it be services that you may offer that might not be available in a particular part of the, uh, the globe? Um, or or do this, does it have to be an actual hard product? No, it does not have to be a hard product. Um, I'll give you some examples of service companies that we've assisted in the past. I think on our Brazil mission, we had a company that does marketing materials, website design, um, 
and they were interested in the Brazilian market to help Brazilian companies who want to sell to U.S. companies. That way, this company would be the go-to um, marketer U.S. company for these for these Brazilian companies. But we've also had IT cybersecurity companies um, go on our missions. Uh, companies that are in the defense and security industry that work on contracts with foreign governments. It doesn't have to be a product. It can be any type of service. I know PR and advertising companies have been interested. All sorts of consulting firms, engineering firms that just want to do business abroad, really. So it's not limited. Good. And I think that's great. I think sometimes we kind of live in our own little U.S. bubble and we think that because it's available here that it's available everywhere. And that's not the case in some of these other developing countries that, that really could use some of what we do here. So I think that's great. Any other questions that we have? If you do, unmute yourself. Uh, I think that, that's good. Um, I, some great information. Are those, is that one slide? If we could get it in two different components, that would be great. I'll, I'll go ahead and share the, the, the R3 program and the other one separately, because I think there's definitely uh, people that would want the international and also the other people. So do they come, can I get them separate if that's possible? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yep. Any other questions in the room? And do they ever, are they, are they planning on doing, um, I guess maybe workshops for people that down the road for, especially somebody just getting into exporting or just getting into business, do they offer, because I think sometimes people are intimidated by uh, the whole export thing and, you know, um, they need somebody to hold their hand, I think. And uh, do they ever offer that or do you think they'll be offering that down the road, Madison? So on very occasional, we'll do webinars and we'll actually have someone from the U.S. Embassy, like um, from Costa Rica or something, speak. Um, when it comes to general exporting, we haven't traditionally hosted those webinars in the past, but the Small Business Development Center and Enterprise Florida and the U.S. Commercial Service, they do those types of webinars, and I'll usually reshare them on Global Tampa Bay's LinkedIn, but that, okay. isn't, that isn't to say that we won't do that, especially when we're trying to figure out in this virtual world, what can we do that doesn't involve international travel? So that might be something that we will have on the books in the next couple of months or early next year. Yeah, I just think it's kind of intimidating. And it's nice for us as a chamber to know what, when we're out talking to businesses, you know, some resources that might be available to them, um, you know, to export their widgets or whatever their particular service is. So um, Global Tampa Bay obviously is something that people need to be a part of, so. Mm -hmm. Any other questions in the room? I don't hear anybody. Well, awesome. I did record it, I think, and um, we'll get this out and share it. I, I appreciate you guys being a part of, of this and we look forward to hopefully um, actually having human to human meetings at some point or hybrid versions thereof. So um, if there are no other questions, we thank you and I'll, I'll get this information out as quick as I can to everybody that's on the call. David, do you have anything else? Nope, I have nothing else. Madison, enjoy, uh, Madison, enjoy wherever you're at. I forget where you said you were, but it's raining, so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. And we're ready for football. Go Lightning, even up there wherever you're at, so. <laughs> exactly. Go <laughs> Lightning. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks, Doug. Yeah. Driving us.